Hey guys, welcome to another video of mine. I've just been given the opportunity to review the uh, rotor light systems. It's a first for me, I love these lights. When I first saw them, I was really quite intrigued. It's this big round LED lights and I thought, let's check it out, let's see what they're all about and see if they live up to, to the hype. So this past week, I was away on a shoot in the Transkei in the Eastern Cape of South Africa. I took the uh, rotor lights with me. So what I had with me was the rotor light AOS kit with two AOS lights and the rotor light Neo 2 as well as the rotor light Neo 1. Let's cue the intro and let's get this video started. Right, welcome back guys. Let's kick off this review with the Rotolite AOS kit. So a little disclaimer here, just to let you guys know, I haven't been paid by Rotolite. Uh, I haven't been paid by Sunshine Co, the distributor for Rotolites in South Africa. So you'll have the complete and utter truth from my side. First impressions out the bag. It looks like a really nifty light to have in your arsenal. One light weighs about 1.4 kgs. It's got two handles at the back, giving you a nice grip if you're not mounting it on a tripod. Two dials at the rear, so you can control your brightness on the one dial and your color temperature on the other dial. Pressing both these buttons simultaneously will give you access to the menu. So you can go in and select all your different functions, such as different shooting modes, such as your flash modes, strobe. You can access the special effects features Ooh, looks like we've got some lightning heading our way. It's pretty scary stuff. Now that I've got the fire going, it's nice and warm in here. The pack also comes with filters that you can add, such as diffusion filters and color correction filters. Really, really handy to have. Color accuracy on these lights are absolutely phenomenal. Completely flicker free and doesn't generate any kind of heat. You can plug them in. They've got AC power as well as a V-Lock battery system that you can mount on the rear, giving you about three hours worth of battery time. When you switch to flash, uh, using it for stills and such, the output of the flash goes down to about 250% boosted output. Whereas if you plug it in via your mains, it'll give you about a 500% boost. They have HSS or high sync speed enabled if you use the Elenchrom Skyport transmitters. Thanks to Elenchrom, they teamed up with Rotolite in this one and made it available to most camera models available on the market today. Really amazing, amazing addition. Due to time constraints and getting the gear to me in time, the supplier had to supply me with a previous version AOS which does not have the receivers built in. The new AOS, Neo 2 and the Nova Pro 2s come with the Elenchrom Skyport receivers built into the lights now. All you need is an Elenchrom Skyport HSS transmitter and you're good to go. The maximum continuous output is rated at 5750 lux at 3 feet. It gives you a good amount of continuous light for video usage. I'm being lit now by one AOS over there with two diffusion panels on it and another one over there that's actually behind my scrim, just giving a nice soft lighting. Behind me here I've got the Rotolite Neo 2 lighting the sides. Um, and the Rotor Light Neo 1 lighting my side over here. Bit of a disadvantage using these as studio flashes for stills is that they're not as high powered as a standalone studio flash. You can't expect to use these in an outdoor setting. If you've got ambient lighting such as the sun, uh, straight no diffusion, then you're not going to see much effect from these lights. If however you're using it like I am right now in a studio environment, it really excels. Plus you have the added advantage that you can use high sync with these guys. Right now, while there are many similarities between the Rotolite Neo 2 and the Rotolite AOS systems, you have to know that the Neo system is a lot smaller than the AOS kit, therefore less powerful. All right, cool. So we're setting up for our interview at the moment. We're busy doing a basic three-point light setup. We're gonna be using the Rotolite AOS as our main full light. Uh, we're gonna be using that to kind of mimic the daylight coming through the windows over here. Our character's gonna be sitting over here. I'm gonna be using the Rotolite Neo on a C-stand for a bit, of, a bit of a backlight just to bring him out of the background over here. This is as far as we're going and we're just looking where we're going to place the third light. Alright, All right. so let's place this snow. These snows are really cool because they're small, punchy, you can put them in really cool places. 
uh, at the moment I'm just trying to set it onto the C-stand. If we had different gripping options it would have been a bit easier. We are in the middle of the trans sky so we have to make do with what we got. At the moment I'm just going to use a basic no-go arm onto the nail because it's so nice and light. It really just fits on there great. It's an older no-go arm so I don't mind getting it really tight into this grip arm. Even though this nail is very light it's not going to really bother me too much. Boom look at that. Nice and light and be out of the way. I find these nails extremely punchy for their size and the bike color is excellent. So we'll just raise this up and then just using a little nail arm. Alright, I think we're gonna live at 60% for now. Once we've got character in, we'll see if that's enough and we'll be on the shit of it. The great thing about these lights, both EOS and NEO, is there is absolutely no recycle time when using it for a flash. You can literally carry on shooting for however long your camera can buffer for. There's going to be no power loss, it's just going to carry on, it's a machine. Right, so in closing, my conclusion regarding the EOS lights are that I really, really like the design, I really like that you have two handles at the back that you can hand hold them, they're not too heavy, you're not going to get tired easily, the color temperature is great. I love that you can use a strobe, you can use high sync on these guys. The only thing I would say is that it feels a bit like an afterthought that Rotor Light included a, a plastic kind of cover on these lights that acts as a housing where you can add filters just lock it closed. I found the locking mechanism not that great. I, fi I find it, it doesn't quite lock always and it just kind of falls out sometimes and then your filters fall out and it just it's it's a mess. I would have loved to have seen a kind of a mechanical lock where you can really lock it in. The tripods are quite flimsy. I feel they're not as rugged and strong as I'd like them to be. Especially when you're using an EOS, I'd feel a lot more secure knowing that they're locked down the heavyweighted tripods. I do understand it's more for flexibility of being able to carry them around and thus they're a bit lighter but I I feel the build quality and the sturdiness of these tripods are lacking. Besides all that, I think it's it's a great system. I definitely want to get a system of my own, especially for this kind of environment, especially for vlogging, especially for stills. I think I'll use it 90% of the time. At the end of it all, I would love to see the EOS kit with better tripods, all the lights with better filter holders. And another addition I think would be really, really nice to have is a remote control to power these lights with. It's just so I can choose what settings, what power outage I want, what color temperature I want, and if I want any kind of special effects to it. It would really, really just help me to focus on my camera or focus sitting here speaking to the camera without having to get up every two seconds to try and change it and, and match it and, and so on. It, it would really just speed up my workflow a lot. But as an overall, I absolutely love these lights. I'm going to be very sad to give them back to Rotor Light tomorrow. I love, I love them so much. The Elenchrom HSS transmitter can wirelessly control four different groups, changing each group's power and color temperature settings remotely. You can also change and activate the SFX from the transmitter now. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think. What are your thoughts on these lights? And if you enjoyed my video, please hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.